Philippine diversity is considered as one of the richest in the world. However, it is also among the most threatened. According to the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, or DENR, the Philippines is losing approximately 47,000 hectares of forest cover every year due largely to illegal logging. As per DENR, the country now has only a little more than 4 million hectares of forest left compared to 21 million hectares during the year 1900. The effects of natural calamities has also worsened due to deforestation. Seeing the need to address this pressing concern, the country's top business tycoon, Dr. Lucio C. Tan, through the Tan Yan Key Foundation Incorporated, created a program to help reforest the country to help mitigate the effects of climate change and to better the lives of Filipinos. We call it the Dr. Lucio C. Tan Legacy Forest Project. The intention of the Legacy Forest Program originally is to increase the planting of native trees. Through the Dr. Lucio C. Tan Legacy Forest Project, Tanyan Key Foundation Incorporated, in partnership with the University of the Philippines Los Baños, committed to plant 15 million trees in 10,000 hectares of forest land in different parts of the country in a span of 10 years. Tanyan Key Foundation was able to plant 620 hectares in the UP land grant area. So it's about planting indigenous trees to make sure that the population of native trees increases. No? Caranglan Nueva Ecija is one of the partner communities of the Foundation's Dr. Lucio C. Tan Legacy Forest Project. Based on the Foundation's 2018 annual report, the reforestation program in Caranglan, Nueva Ecija has covered 787 hectares of the 930 hectare area for reforestation and protection in the area, greatly improving its flora and fauna despite the province's harsh climate. We trial 15 variety of species. Meron kasi tayong kinakategorize na commodity, one is the timber wood. Another one is the fuel wood and agroforestry. Another one is yung alibangbang. Alibangbang is a non-flammable species and it serves as a pioneer species. And the last one is the batino. More than caring for the environment, the Legacy Forest Project also gives priority to social welfare by providing livelihood opportunities in the form of employment to local farmers in the area. Among them are Efrina Lamsis and Elizabeth Tamundon. Before partnering with the Legacy Forest Project, some of the farmers in Caranglan, Nueva Ecija, practice kaingin, a slash-and-burn type of cultivation which greatly contributes to deforestation. Nasubukan din namin sila nagputol ng kahoy para maipugon, para lang may pangtustos. Kagaya sa bukid, di ba sir, kung minsan eh, hindi siya yung sapat yung ani pag uh, kinukulang. Siyempre, sarili namin yung area. Nag-uuling na kami sir. Bawal talaga sir yun. Kaya lang wala na ka po kaming choice na pagtatrabahoan ng iba. Aside from the harmful farming practice, the farmers in the area planted crops but with minimal returns in investment. Masakit sa dibdib. Nananalingin ako sa Diyos. Sana hindi ako magkasakit ganun para ako ay laging malakas sa magtrabaho para sa amin. Pag minsan, pag nahihirapan ka, naisip mong hanggang kailan kaya itong paghirap na, na to. Ngayong puhunan mo sa garden, tapos imedyo bumagsak siya. Siyempre, mangluluho ka din kasi utang mo lang din yung pinagpuhunan mo ron. Focusing on long-term sustainability, the Forest Legacy Project provided livelihood to farmers like Elizabeth and Efrina, as well as education. It's not just about planting trees at the end of the day, because once you plant trees, you address three bottom line. If the microclimate is uh, enhanced, the soil is also enhanced, so better for livelihood of the people for farming. Third part is economics. So people, they are able to generate, they're able to have livelihood. Being employed by the Legacy Project provided Efrina and Elizabeth steady income to help with their day-to-day -day expenses, greatly improving their family's living condition. Malaki ang naitulong kasi may, karag, may karagdagan siya sa budget namin. 
Nung nandito na ako, tapos ayun, napag, anuhan naman namin na magpatayo ng bahay dyan sa Patagan. Isa sa pundar ko na nagtulungan namin mag-asawa. Noon kasi hindi ka makabili ng mga gusto mo, sir. E ngayon, pwede mong bilhin ng paunti-unti. Katulad po nung yung washing ko po. And then, nakabili din po ako ng ininot-inotan ko ng bumibila ng yero. At gusto kong mayero lahat yung bahay namin. Other than planting trees, another program of the foundation that aims to help farmers is the Small Water Impounding Project. This program aims to help communities make effective use of water resources for irrigation and agricultural production. The town in San Fabian in Pangasinan is among the communities who benefit from this project. Yung creek kasi medyo mababa sa service area. Kaya ang ginagawa, naglalagay ng diversion dam para tumaas yung tubig para mapatakbo dito sa mga bukid. Bilang sa pagsasaka, dapat yung aming pananim na palay ay kailangan na palaging mayroong tubig para sa ganun na ah, hindi po sila mahirapan pagdating na po ng nag-init. Farmers are among the most vulnerable when it comes to social issues. Without agriculture would mean increased poverty, hunger, and malnutrition for the country. That's why through programs like the Dr. Lucio C. Tan Legacy Forest Project, and Small Water Impounding Project, the Foundation hopes to help empower farmers by improving their state of living and giving them a stronger sense of purpose to better not only their lives, but also of their fellow Filipinos. Tanenke is my father. Farmer provide the food for, for us. We have planted trees in more than 1,000 hectares. Reforestation project protect the area, climate change, and improve livelihood opportunities to bring back our air quality balance, biodiversity, and best place to live in for the humankind. A healthy populace speaks of a healthy nation, and in order to ensure the quality of health in the country, expert medical professionals are needed to help bring wellness and provide immediate health care, helping uplift the well-being of every Filipino. As part of Tanyan Key Foundation's health project, they created a program that helps aspiring doctors by funding their advanced medical education through a specialty scholarship program. Awareness is important for continuous learning. Dr. Elton Ong is one of the scholars who was given a chance to pursue his medical studies abroad thanks to TYKFI ABI Medical Specialty Scholarship Program of Tan Yan Key Foundation in partnership with one of the largest breweries in the country. Having graduated medicine at the University of Santo Tomas, Dr. Ong wanted to further specialize in neurogenetics. This is the study of the genetic basis of a lot of neurological disorders. So, and then I got into the program through NYU. Yung New York University. I got an offer you know, to do a three-year fellowship. But at that time, syempre, medyo financially hard up kami. So we don't really have a choice. You know, so bas funding has to come from an organization that would help you. But with a strong drive and passion to help his fellow countrymen, Dr. Ong decided to take a leap of faith and apply to the scholarship program of the foundation. I heard about the Tan Yankee Foundation. So yung, which is a part of the Asia Brewery, diba? So, and then I applied. Every year, I think they would get like one or two scholars. Eh. So I got the scholarship, and then I went to do the training in NYU. Dr. Ong was accepted into the Medical Specialty Scholarship Program. The program provided him with a one-year scholarship to help him with his expenses while he studies abroad at the New York University School of Medicine in the year 2000. 
it was supposed to be like for a one year na scholarship eh. Pero the training would last for three years. So in second year and third year ko, I was offered already by the New York University to finish the training. After three grueling years of studying abroad, Dr. Ong finally finished his specialization in neurogenetics. Impressed with his performance, Dr. Ong was offered by the chairman of the Department of Neurology to sponsor him and help him with his working visa. Though a professional career in one of the world's greatest cities sound enticing, fate had other plans for Dr. Ong. That was like the initial plan. So, parang okay, di ba? And then I came home, tapos sabi ko, sige, initially I thought, okay, maybe I could just serve for the, yung, yung serve the two years and then go back there. Pero, nung pag-uwi ko, I got this invitation from a friend of mine. His name is Dr. Luzo. He used to practice in both Ilocos Norte and Sur. I got the offer, tapos nag-apply ako sa mga hospitals, and then I got accepted. So, parang basically, I was the first na resident neurologist of Ilocos Sur 15 years ago. Despite not being a local of Vigan Ilocos Sur, Dr. Ong's practice of neurology in Vigan proved to be a blessing as he became the first resident neurologist in the province. I had to adjust, you know, during the first few weeks. Siyempre, province life. But once I started practicing, so that's when I realized na Iba pala, you know, when you practice in the province, they will really appreciate, you know, your efforts. I got a chicken, nakakuha ko ng kambing. Tapos may nagbigay ng banana. Yung banana na talagang ipaplant mo siya. Iba yung fulfillment that you get eh, by helping others. He also actively helps the foundation which paved the way to his medical profession by participating in medical missions and forums in partnership with one of the largest breweries in the country. Dr. Ong also became a contributor to the publishing of the Foundation's Medical Forum Health Guide that aims to help lay people understand and use knowledge towards better health. Uh, the Asia Brewery Medical Forum it's a, yung book na to is actually a compilation of all the different lectures conducted by the different scholars of Tanyanki Foundation. It's also kind of one way of uh, Tanyanki to actually reach out to people and, and make them realize and learn yung different disorders in a less scientific uh, manner. Ganun. Dr. Ong admits that he still thinks about the life he might have lived if he chose to return to New York to practice his profession. But the rewards of helping his fellow Filipinos will always be greater and fulfilling. It's not really about fame or money. Eh. So at the end of the day, what's more fulfilling is actually for you, as a doctor, you know, for you to be able to help other people and reach out to, you know, especially the less fortunate ones.